Hello filmmakers, it's Carrie with Filmmaker Central. And today, Blackmagic announced DaVinci Resolve, nine, no, not 19, 18.5. They've done this once before where they didn't do a full point release. They just did a 0. 0.5. Well, they did it again this time. This is 18.5. And there's so much stuff in it, it probably might as well be a 19. There's new AI features, there's new cut page fe features, there's edit page features, there's Fairlight features, there's Fusion features, there's delivery features. There is tons, tons of new stuff. Now, when you first uh, go to install it, you'll actually get a uh, little preview of some of the stuff that's in it. Uh, cut page improvements, split AV edits, you can create gaps, uh, detect scene cuts, trim to playhead. Those are some things that were kind of missing in the cut page that didn't make it overly useful for everybody. Now, of course, moving Resolve to the iPad means you need more functionality because right now you have the cut page. Now you can enable the other pages, but I don't want to get into that. But the cut page I've used and I use it once in a while, but because it's missing what I feel are some really key things, it just, I have to keep going back and forth to the edit page to remove gaps and add gaps. And, um, but now it looks like the cut page is going to have some cool new stuff. Uh, there's a new text or a speech to text engine. So you can create subtitles, you can annotate your text, you can easily make titles. Um, I'm going to use this for our Trail Traveler channel to create our own subtitles. Now, the reason for that is YouTube favors videos where you provide subtitles versus them creating the subtitles. The other issue with YouTube doing it is, number one, it's not that good, and two, it always spells my name wrong. It's K-E-R-R-Y, and it always does it C-A-R-R-I-E. So that's a biggie for me. So being able to take the speech to text, create the subtitles, edit them, fix those little mistakes, and then upload that all to YouTube will make it easier for non-English speaking people to watch my videos, as well as to have better accuracy in the subtitles and hopefully give a little bit of a bump to the YouTube algorithm for us providing our own subtitles. So that's a biggie. In Fusion, there's now support for universal scene description. If you're into 3D modeling and those types of scenes and those types of assets, this is huge. Now, for me, it's not. I don't do those things, so I'm, I'm not concerned about that at all, but I, I can definitely see the benefit for people who are doing that. In Fusion, there is a new multi-merge tool. Now, I have used multi-merge tool in the, or a multi-merge node in the past, but it was a plugin and now it's native. And this can be really handy when you wanna work more in a layer format and we'll get into some of these things in other videos, but that's going to be a, a really big one for a lot of cases because you can add them all to the merge node and then rearrange them. Big time saver for certain things. It's not for everything. And of course, many, many, many people have used Fusion without a multi-merge node before. This does make things a little easier. Remote monitoring. So again, not something I do, but where you are, you want other people to review your edit in real time, you can now do that. You can also publish a presentation of the video. This is all with your online Blackmagic Cloud account. Very cool stuff. Uh, there's also an iOS app to do the monitoring. So that's kind of neat. Uh, per timeline automatic backups, uh, fast local backups for network, cloud, and collaboration workflows, upload directly to TikTok. Okay. <laughs> for you TikTok, for you TikTok creators, yeah, it's a big time savings. You can go right from DaVinci Resolve, upload it right to your TikTok account. Um, 
Again, not something I do. Uh, I do some Instagram, but not a whole lot. But having um, TikTok, big for TikTok people. Uh, some new stuff in Fairlight, uh, edit and mix groups. Again, my projects aren't that complicated, so I'm not too concerned about that. But there's, um, there's definitely some things that I think are going to be kind of cool for definitely certain people. Not for everybody, but for some. Now, <laughs> the entire list is huge right here. <laughs> I'll show you this, the entire list of new things. I haven't even had a chance to review this. The announcement only came a little over an hour ago. And I, the, you can download it right now. You can go to Blackmagic Resolve and, or uh, blackmagicdesign.com and right there on the homepage, download 18.5. There are things that are studio specific. Any of the AI tools are generally studio specific. I have the studio version. And because I, I don't want to go through everything right now and say, this is studio, this isn't. I run the studio version. I think it's well worth the $300. This is a free upgrade for anybody with any previous version of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So you don't have to worry about that. And of course the free version is still free. It just doesn't have all of the new stuff. So let's get into looking at some of these new features and how they work. Okay, let's take a look at the transcribe tool. I think that one is pretty cool. So I'm gonna select the clip down here. It highlights it over here in the media pool. I right click on it. I go down to transcribe audio. Also notice above is audio classification. I'll touch on that for just a moment. You can select one or a group of clips run audio classification on them and it will try and detect what's in there. Dialogue, dogs, people, rivers, thing. I haven't played around with that yet. I, I don't know that I'm going to use that, but it's a cool new thing and it's worth checking out. Let's go to transcribe audio. Okay. Let's see how long this takes. This is a MacBook M1 Pro or MacBook Pro M1 Max. Um, it's maxed out. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. Okay, it's almost finished. It took a while to initialize, but once it did it, then the rest of it went pretty quick. And what I can see is that it picked up parts of the clip that have already trimmed off. So I'm gonna have to do a little editing there, fix that. It spelled mine and Katarina's name so wrong. So I'll need to fix that. And I'll go through and just uh, make just make sure everything is in good shape. Let me go over to, uh, let me just, I'll go to the end here. Actually, let's take this clip. I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, now one of the coolest things in the color page that they've added is a new relighting tool. This could, do all kinds of cool stuff if it all works properly. Uh, this is the first beta, so I'm <laughs> relight. Okay. And we go. So it creates a, a depth map where we can then take and reposition lights to get a better effect. Maybe we want to try and fake the time of day. We are trying to do everything at the same time, make it look like a lot shorter of a scene, and we can have light come in from a different direction. So this opens up a ton of new possibilities in ways that we can light stuff and make it look better. There's point sources, there's spotlights. Um, there's going to be all kinds of cool stuff here. But again, I'm not sure that all this is quite working 
proper oh no look there it is so we can move the light around So this is going to be some, some interesting things to see how well that works in different scenarios, maybe changing night for day or day for night, trying to uh, cast light from a certain direction so it doesn't look like the sun has actually moved through the course of a shoot. So relight looks like that's going to be pretty, pretty freaking cool. I need to play around with this some more. It's a fairly complicated new piece. Now, one thing that I am going to use a lot of may seem like a fairly trivial feature. Now, uh, often I'm building my thumbnail in Resolve for YouTube. So here's an example, White Rim Trail, Moab. And in the past, I would have to go to the color page. I'd have to grab a still. Then I'd go to the, the gallery, right click on it, export make sure I changed it to JPEG or TIFF or something else instead of DPX. So it's this multi-step process. Once I have the frame selected, I go to file, export, current frame is still, select it as a JPEG. I'll uh, throw it in my renders. And let's go check that out. instant thumbnail for YouTube. None of the other processes. I, that was literally basically two mouse clicks and I have it versus something that literally would take like 30 seconds or so. Again, not a huge deal, but for me, it's something I'm going to use all the time because we're constantly putting out YouTube videos and I very often just use a still from the video as the thumbnail, and I just want an easy way of doing it. So this, this is a big win. But there is a ton of new features, and knowing Blackmagic, this isn't the end of it, all right? This is early beta, the very first version of the beta. You can go download it now, but I think some of these new things are, are pretty neat. I think it's going to make me use the cut page more. I think some of the new tools that are in the edit page I'm going to be able to use the, some new color stuff I'm going to use. I don't know if I'll use the 3D stuff that's in Fusion or not, but you know, it's things for me to play around with and try and learn. So now one thing I, to make note of with previous major versions, when you install it, it asks you to uh, upgrade your database. Well, it didn't do that. So, Fortunately, I'd already backed up my database, which you should do anyway. If you're upgrading from 18.1 to 18.5, back up your database first. But once I went in, it did not ask me to update the database. But as soon as I tried to open a project, then it said I had to update that project. And it said it would no longer be compatible with anything before 18.5. So if you want to play around with it and possibly go back to 18.1, then you need to back up either your full database or back up your projects so that when you go back to 18.1, you can import those original projects because the 18.5 upgraded ones are not going to work. So keep that in mind. So I'm really excited to play with more of these things, do some more videos on them, figure out how all these different things work properly. There, like you saw the list, there's tons and tons of new features, a lot of stuff for us to figure out, a lot of stuff for us to uh, make videos on and share with you how these different things work. So thanks for watching everybody. This is Kerry with Filmmaker Central. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.